Jeremy Clark. And you're watching TeenageMutantNinjaTurtles.com. Go get there. Cowabunga! just brings back bad memories. She was killed, you understand? True. Okay, great. Right. Michelle Noel here from 90s Con, and joining me right now is professional comic book anchor, Jeremy Clark. Jeremy, thank you so much for joining our show. Yeah, We're so to excited to see you, Cowabunga. Okay, first off, let's start off with 90s Con. How excited you are to be at the first ever 90s Con? Well, see, I am excited because a lot of the titles that I worked on are, you know, a lot of people grew up with in the 90s. Yeah. So naturally, I think I'm, you know, going to see a lot of really unique folks and people that are going to be equally as excited uh, about the titles and things that I worked on. Awesome. Is there anybody in particular you're geeking out? You mean like any of the actors? Anything. or Just go all at it. Oh, I'll tell you, the, the, the gentleman behind me, okay. Mr. Rags Morales, he worked on one of my Ooh. favorite... Uh, comic book series from nice. DC called Identity Crisis, and this was oh, yeah. many years before I got to do some stuff for DC. Right. So it was really cool to kind of see some of the other guys oh. uh, that I was reading before yeah. I even got into the industry as a pro. That's awesome. Any other TV shows that you're kind of excited to see? So I know everybody's like maybe Sabrina the Teenage yeah. Witch. You know some of the, the 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 90s pop people. The music that we obviously have on. I know that it's there's crazy, like yeah. Backstreet Boys. Yep. I think are going to be NSYNC, here. Yep. Some of those. Guys. So, yeah. you know, if I could ever escape my table long enough to be <laughs> able to go enjoy some of those aspects, I, I absolutely would. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, they do have some amazing fan base, but so do you. So how is it feeling like meeting up your fans and knowing that you're still beloved after so many years? Well, the way I see it is I couldn't be doing this and be on this side of the table if there wasn't an equal amount of support on the other side of yeah. the table. So at the end of the day, I'm just happy when people appreciate the work yeah. and when they want to see more things that I'm that I'm having the pleasure of working on because yeah. it is a team effort and I'm just one cog of that machine. <laughs> so hopefully it's a good one and yeah. not one that's completely, uh, you know, fallen apart and become decrepit over the years. That's true. <laughs> so you've been blessed to work with so many various comic book projects projects with multiple publishers, including IDW, DC Boom, Titans. Can you tell us a little bit about your origin story? Like, what's your Once Upon a Time? Sure. So, I, you know, I, I broke in like most people do, working on a, a bunch of the indie stuff, you know, stuff that maybe was well behind the scenes, Kickstarter type of yeah. projects, you know, and then as uh, some of those projects started to accumulate, there were more and more publishers that, I guess, began to take notice. And as a result, I was offered more opportunities within uh, the bigger companies, like some of the ones you just mentioned. And uh, as a result of that, I got to, you know, start working on covers with Raymond Gay for like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers and Vampirella and a lot of these things that are associated with the 90s, you know, today. How has your former education um, helped you to become who, where you are today as a comic book artist? So I'm going to be the uh, the individual that nobody should follow <laughs> in regards to that because I ended up going to college, uh, but for something completely non-art related. Tell us! Yeah, I, I was a political science major oh with a double minor in history and business. You don't business. think it's actually coming into useful right now? Uh, you mean like with all the crazy things that are going yeah. around the world today? You know, I, I do still keep track of it, and I yeah. and I I do enjoy diving into you know the various things that are happening geopolitically around the world. Yeah. But at the end of the day, my job is to sit at a table and put some lines on paper. Yeah. So that's what people want. They don't want to hear about all the other you know a little bit more serious types of things that are happening in right. the world. And I'm just happy, again, to be a part of a career yeah. that uh, does it, it's make people smile. For sure. And, and it allows people to kind of enjoy and inspire to do some things of oh, their own. I love that. But what inspired you to get into this field? So I was a big fan of uh, projects like The Crow, yeah. which was uh, Ooh, James yeah. Obar's series, and uh, DC's Watchmen, the original Watchmen with Dave Gibbons. Sure. Uh, so more of the like not major like Batman Superman yeah. I was always in more of the noir kind of darker deeper type of stuff yeah and as a result of that I think I gravitated more towards inking because yeah. 
that's all that related to the raw black and white, you know, line work that was associated with each of the books. And, that's awesome. And that's what drew me in personally into uh, the comic scene. So what effects do you think with the current boom of popularity and superhero and action films and genres has had in the comic book industry? This is from Lauren, one of our fans. Well, obviously, to Lauren, yeah. uh, you know, it's brought in a whole new audience, I think, of people that are fans of the stuff. It's made it a little bit more... Uh, accessible to the regular audience in terms of it's not like this nerd thing yeah. that is only related to a particular group. I think you see everybody from all walks of life being uh, very uh, excited about the, the stuff that we are doing and, and about going to the movies and they're not worried to put on a Batman shirt or you know something of that nature anymore. Yeah. It's it's kind of become this whole pop culture scene that everybody seems to want to be a part of. So I think for, in terms of the movies, it's just brought in a whole new wave of audience that's been more acceptable to what comic books are and what the, the genre of the content is. Right behind us is the last Ronin. So how did you guys get in, how did you get involved with the Turtles? So I, at first it all started with, uh, you know, Raymond Gay was working and penciling out a bunch of turtle related content that a lot of people were were enjoying yeah. and then uh, there were a number of stores that wanted to do exclusive variants that were specific to their region their audience their stuff and it all started with uh, the variant to issue 100 which yeah. uh, you can see here which featured the entire cast of turtles including the new one uh, Jenica uh, which was a female turtle yeah. and then from that it translated into doing more of the regular series stuff and then two variant covers for issue one of TMNT, The Last Ronin, yeah. which was the one that you see behind me, as yeah. well as the New York Comic Con exclusive, yeah. uh, which was a huge hit, and, and everybody seemed to enjoy it. It just, it kind of snowballed from there, and yeah. I'm, again, just happy to be a part of it. Yeah, we got, we got some footage on San Diego Comic Con, too, so that was, like, really a good big turnout over there, too, as well. Um, yeah. What other projects do you have going on in your pipeline? So there's a number of new projects that I am currently in development with that I can't really speak oh. entirely about, but there is a horror anthology, which is really different from the stuff that I've been doing okay. in the past. Uh, it features this like spider queen type character with all these like alpha spiders oh, and nice. things, and it's called just OMG, a horror anthology. Yeah. And uh, Ray and I are also doing some cover work for that and, and really centralizing around that character. And so it's just kind of this departure away from superheroes yeah. and things to a more just classic cult like old fiction uh, horror related content from like back in the day. Nice. Okay, before we close out with our fast turtle questions, what advice do you have for people who want to get into the comic book industry? So naturally the easiest way or I should say the, the most appropriate way to go about doing it would be to come to shows like this. Yeah. A lot of the times you will find editors or professionals that have already been in the industry for a long time yeah. that can help provide some of that insight and feedback that you otherwise might not get from just looking online. Right. You know, coming up and having a conversation like we're doing right now. Uh, there's a lot of information that can be had that way. But submitting portfolios, doing the portfolio reviews, always trying to get better at your craft, yeah. obviously. Uh, increasingly adding new techniques, new types of things to the repertoire yeah. that you already have. And then finding just what you really enjoy doing. Yeah. You know, if there's a particular genre that you're attracted to, focus on that. You don't yeah. have to be the best at everything. You just have to be really good at one particular thing, and you'll be fine. I so. love that because you don't have to take the uh, you know the conventional route. Obviously, your unconventional route. Look where it took you, and you don't have to stay in the same freeway as everybody else is. It's okay to take a different. No, freeway. everybody has a path, uh, you know, in this world, and eventually, as long as you're you, you're determined and you're willing to put in the work and the yeah. time. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to get there uh, when it's all said and done. That's awesome. Okay, let's go with our fast turtle questions. Uh -oh. Are you ready? Ooh, okay. I'm gonna probably miss all from of these. Chris oh. from TeenageMutantTurtles.com. The turtles just asked you for a pizza order. How do, would you like your pizza? What's your favorite topic? Oh, I'm gonna go with a Hawaiian for sure. I love pineapples. I you know, know, everybody hates on the pineapple first. on a pizza. Come on, what is it. wrong with you people? I need that. I mean, uh, it's a wonderful, of course. Any type of pizza is great because pizza <laughs> is amazing. Uh, 
it's healthy too. The funny thing is, uh, for the cover of issue 106 yep. uh, that Eric Henson and I worked on, he had tucked a slice of pizza in Michelangelo's belt yeah. on the cover as he's like doing a nunchuck pose, Bruce oh, Lee awesome. style. So there's like a dripping <gasps> slice of pizza in his belt buckle. That's love how it. much we like pizza. Oh my so, gosh, I love pizza's it. great, love FYI. It. Who's your favorite turtle? Uh, Leonardo, and that's because I like anybody that uses a katana. I was really uh, gravitated to like traditional Japanese, yeah. shogun uh, type of elements, and so it could have literally been any of the Aww. turtles personality-wise, but whoever had the swords was going to be my guy. Guess what's my next question? What's your favorite choice of weapon? Okay, go, now go, we go. Got it? SPN. Done. That was awesome. Done. Okay, Rapid you, fire. <laughs> Keep if going. If you got a chance to be one of the newest turtles, uh, what color would it be? Ooh. Uh, well, I, I guess the last Ronin isn't really black. It's like this dark bluish gray right. type thing. But I like black yeah. uh, and red. And unfortunately, red was the original bandana for all of the turtles yeah. uh, when they were first uh, released by it's Kevin It's funny because when I think of 90s day. Con, this is like the vibe. This I, is the I vibe. Miss Hot Topics and Spencer the, the way you The funny spin. thing is I'll be in like a blazer tomorrow and I'll look way more professional. This was travel day attire, so <laughs> you'll catch it how it is but what are your thoughts about the female turtle like venus which back. one because there's two yeah yeah both okay Jericho so venus. venus was never well received mm. just in general but uh, the, it was like there's an underground cult following though i you know i think the fact that they provided the turtles in general like a ranged character yeah. like jenica because she uses bow and arrow and has like some of this overreach yeah. type of uh qualities to her yeah that all the other turtles you know, they had to be like up close and personal in your face i was like come on is nobody oh. gonna be like this cool like you know range type style character so for me out of the two female turtles jenica would probably be the choice for what me what are your thoughts when you see female fans coming up and going like i love your work and you think it's like an all boys club but what is it when you when the females come up you'd be surprised because even on titles that are like vampirella or lady death or some of these more voluptuous type of more risque yeah. female characters. I would say a vast majority of the fans of that type of work are indeed female. Yeah. And so I always thought it was going to be the exact opposite uh, in that there would just only be a conglomerate of male you know, fans of that type of work. Right. But then it's uh, always shocked me how many uh, female fans there are to certain types of genres yeah. that wouldn't be kind of like, they're not atypical. That's amazing. Yeah. What are your, uh, out of the five movies, which one was your favorite? Ooh, uh, do the animated ones count? Sure, why not? Or do, or do I have we to have, choose like one I of mean, the... Chris the, Evan was in it, so why not? <laughs> I mean, those were good. Uh, I, I mean, I would lean to the animated ones. Okay. If I had to choose one of the ones, uh, maybe the second one that had Megan Fox in them. Oh, in okay, it. sure, um, the new one, all right. The one that had like Bebop and Rocksteady. It's Rock okay, Steady we can debate about that later. I mean, <laughs> just because I thought the graphics were like okay. a little bit better, obviously. Fair. You know, everybody likes the classic ones that have like vanilla ice running right, right. around and like the old but that's time like of totally stuff. 80s, 90s. And it is, it is, but that was my childhood. you'll have to forgive me for wanting a little bit extra. Yeah. On the screen, you know? And so True. They, I think they did that with some of the, the content in the new movie. What do you think about the new movie coming out with Seth Rogen being involved in it? Oh, so that's going to be another animated one. Yes. Um, and I I don't think it's only going to be one. I think he's trying to do like a multiple. Yeah, like, like an actual type of thing. Uh, I'm excited for it, actually. I think okay. that it's uh, it got some really unique art direction so okay. far just from the steals that I've yeah, seen. Yeah. And, and I am intrigued by where... I think they're going with I like the whole so. graphic novel yeah. aspect of it. It's like, oh my God, there's like a perfect screenshot just by that. Yeah, I think it's a more, a, a truer rendition of, of perhaps, you know, uh, the graphic novel elements, uh, kind of like how Watchmen, the, the Zack Snyder film, yeah. was Dark. almost, you know, panel to panel. Yeah. If, you, if you looked at it and you kind of, if you ever read the original mm -hmm. series, he tried to maintain this very fluid kind of panel to panel yeah. re recreation of what the actual story was. I hope that's what they're doing with the animated one, because it'd be a lot easier to yeah. do than with a live action kind of format. It's really hard with the fans because, you know, it's like, it's a... It's, you got mixed fans, and it's really hard to kind of please everybody, but we're in a time right now where it's like, I think people are starting to grow into it. Like, I'm starting to like, okay, it's starting to grow to me. It's growing on me, so that's awesome. Now, before we close out, what's your favorite uh, turtle slogan? Booyakasha, turtle power, cowabunga. Cowabunga. Okay, I mean, well, I'm, I always do this, and sometimes I'll sign the books with cowabunga dude yeah. on it as well. So 
Uh, that would probably be the awesome. one. And where can we find you online? What's your social media handle, Cameo? So everything for me is my name, Jeremy okay. Clark. If you can remember that, you're we'll going to start it. We'll there. Yeah. Okay. Jeremy Clark and then the word ink, like inker. So awesome. it's super easy. Jeremy Clark ink, tattoo ink, any kind of ink you okay. can think of besides incorporated. So that's funny. Start there and uh, that's dot com, Instagram, we'll Facebook, awesome. the whole shebang. Cool. Okay. Then we'll close it out with Cowabunga in five, at five seconds. So, hey, Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having Folks, me. Folks, be sure to find him online and hopefully you'll see him at a con near you. Yeah, come see me at a show. I'm Michelle Noel with Jeremy Clark, and we'll see you next time. We ready for five, four, three, two, one? Cowabunga! <laughs>